Good afternoon. I'm Peter Vicenzi, FreedomWorks Press Secretary, here with Tom Fitton, President of Judicial Watch. Tom, thanks for coming in today. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, so there's been a lot of movement uh, regarding Admiral Flynn's case recently. Um, what do you expect we will learn about that? You know, what's happening here? Well, it's General Flynn. General Flynn uh, was National Security Advisor just, for yeah. a minute and a half for President Trump before uh -huh. he was uh, pushed out and uh, subsequently pled guilty. Uh, eventually, he's going to be sentenced, and I guess the concern is that he was unfairly and improperly targeted, that he really didn't lie to the FBI as the FBI suggested, the report suggests otherwise. And uh, so was, for instance, General Flynn the target of one of these FISA warrants that are so controversial. I think people are going to want answers to those questions. Now, the option, obviously, is for President Trump to pardon General Flynn, and that may be happening uh, downstream, but we don't know that. But, you know, General Flynn, in my view, is one of the many victims of the illicit spying uh, targeting the Trump team. If they couldn't get President Trump or candidate Trump, they'd go after his family, they'd go after Carter Page or George Papadopoulos, mm -hmm. or more importantly, General Flynn. Mm -hmm. And didn't we see some stuff about spying on the, uh, from the FBI on the Trump campaign recently? What was that? Well, the New York Times um, obviously got some leaks from those who were uh, running the spy operation, which is unprecedented yeah. against the Trump operation, the Trump presidential campaign. There's nothing like that has ever occurred before. You had the FBI sending an informant, confidential uh, uh, operator, overseas to meet with George Papadopoulos. There was an other government investigator who's going by an alias, a female, who is trying seemingly to lure Papadopoulos into some weird personal relationship. So you had that sort of uh, uh, outrageous conduct on top of the spy operation by the FBI. We don't even know who that woman worked for. Mm -hmm. Government uh, operator may have worked for the CIA or another agency, uh, all targeted at President Trump. This person, Stephen Halper, who went overseas to uh, seemingly maybe record even jo uh, George Papadopoulos, who was a lower level aide, a foreign policy aide uh, at one point for the Trump campaign, also visited the Trump White House once the president was elected. So the question is that the spy operation continue into the Trump presidency. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it seems like there's coordination in some way between the Obama administration and the Clinton campaign for this, in, in a way. It was a joint operation. You yeah. had the Clinton DNC paying Christopher Steele, this spy, mm -hmm. uh, Judicial Watch. We have many Freedom of Information Act lawsuits and uh, uh, that have kind of gone into this. We uncovered that the FBI under Barack Obama, Obama's FBI, was also paying Christopher Steele mm -hmm. in 2016 at the same time that Hillary Clinton and the DNC had hired him to target Trump. And of course, they all wanted his information to go after Trump. Uh, now it's the news is being uh, reported as we speak that Christopher Steele doesn't want to cooperate with Attorney General Barr's investigation into this. So the Clinton DNC. Obama FBI DOJ spy targeting Trump no longer wants to talk about his collusion allegedly with Russia to target him because recall Steele used Russia intelligence sources uh, to uh, uh, target Trump as he put it in the dossier it turned out it was all garbage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, but you mentioned uh, AG Barr uh, and he just tapped U.S. Attorney John Durham to uh, investigate the origins of the Russia probe for other investigations. Can you talk a bit about that? What are we going to see there, you think? Well, that's an important development uh, because he's a U.S. attorney. He can mm -hmm. call in grand juries if need be. I hope it's not just an administrative review. Uh, but I, my guess is those who were behind the spy operation uh, probably are very nervous because they've got serious people. Uh, John Durham has a record of uh, major investigations into government corruption. So he knows what he's doing. And of course, the Attorney General of the United States had previously been an Attorney General uh, back during the Bush years. So uh, I, I hope uh, this leads to grand juries and a serious criminal look at what went on, as opposed to the sorts of reports and reviews that don't end in much other than, contra other than an argument. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, one of the most underreported things in D.C. today, I would say, is the, um, this Utah probe. You've heard about the Utah probe, correct? Mm -hmm. um, can, what's happening there? That's a, a, I don't know if anything's happening. Yeah. I hope something's happening. We haven't heard much, right? This is the like, U.S. attorney who Je uh, Jeff Sessions, the former attorney general, had brought in 
in my way, in my view, to relieve pressure for a special counsel. He didn't mm -hmm. want to appoint a special counsel, so he said, oh, I'll bring in John Huber, uh, U.S. Uh, attorney out in Utah, uh, to investigate whether to investigate the issues that people have been concerned about, mainly the sham investigation of the Clinton email issue and other improprieties at the Justice Department and FBI during the Obama administration. Uh, but no one's heard higher, hide or hair of him, so I don't know if he's doing anything. Maybe he's done something, but um, I'd be pleasantly surprised if something pops up. Yeah, like we haven't heard anything about what's going on with the probe. No. Like, no one really you know, if it was something serious, you should know about it because, uh -huh. A, witnesses would be complaining, their lawyers would be leaking. You'd know there's a grand jury, but there's no indicia of a serious investigation. Kind of as we've seen with the other two probes in a way. Yeah, I mean, you, you know what a real probe looks like when you see the Mueller investigation. Now, of yeah. course, that was an abusive probe, but, you, you know, grand juries usually are an indication that there's something serious afoot. Something going on, yeah. Um, what, do you about, what do you think about some of the efforts by Democrats to hold uh, A.G. Barr in contempt? Do you think that's going anywhere now? Contempt for what? I mean, he, he issued a report, uh, a portion of which uh, is being withheld, a modest portion, I think 2%. And they filed a contempt motion against him out of committee 19 days after the report was issued and 19 days after the fight was began. Uh, these, are, these are politicians looking for a distraction from the fact that their collusion fraud against President Trump has collapsed. They're trying to create new scandals uh, to justify further uh, abuses targeting Trump and his people. Uh, and the idea that they're threatening put the attorney general to jail, in jail uh, literally a few minutes after they get into one document fight with them uh, shows you just where their heads are at. Yeah, because I saw, uh, I forget uh, which senator said this, but it, it's almost as if uh, going after Barr is the consolation prize for Democrats. Well, it's not really about Barr. It's about President Trump. And, of course, uh, the attorney general recognizes that, I'm sure. That's why he doesn't seem terribly mm -hmm. upset by the whole thing. He just realizes it's, a, uh, it's, it's part of this circus. Uh, but it's concerning. It ought to be concerning to Americans because, the, you know, the abuses of President Trump were then candidate Trump continued uh, through the Mueller operation. And now the cudgel's been picked up by the Democrats on the Hill who want to continue what I consider to be the coup operation Mm -hmm. against President Trump, and they'll target anyone they can, including the Attorney General, over nonsense reasons. Mm -hmm. But there's also been some talk that uh, Barr is kind of softened after he uh, gave some of the materials to Adam Schiff, Representative Schiff. Um, could you say anything about that? Do you think that's true? Did he soften? Well, normally that's what would happen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Typically, the executive branch and the legislative branch are always fighting about documents. Mm -hmm. It rarely leads to contempt. Uh, the only other time it led to contempt, at least in recent history, was uh, Attorney General Barr, who was held in contempt after over a year of fighting with Congress, where the Justice Department was refusing to turn over documents about whether or not they lied to Congress. So it was a really specific issue, and whether they lied about Fast and Furious, something that led to hundreds of people dying. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and and that even then it was it was a slow, slow, slow battle. Uh, and there was back and forth. Everyone tried to advert the outcome, uh, but compare and contrast that with the uh, pedal to the metal attitude with uh, Attorney General Barr. Mm -hmm. And remember, there were no controversies during the Obama administration, as we've heard. Recently. Oh, that's right. There were no scandals. I forgot to <laughs> yeah. mention that. Right. So, yeah. Um, one thing is, do you think we'll ever see um, an unredacted report? Uh, I, maybe I think we'll see we'll we'll see more of the report. Mm -hmm. um, many many of the redactions have to do with impacting ongoing investigations. So as those investigations come to a close, in retrospect, some of the report may subsequently be released. Uh, grand jury material can't be released. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think we'll see that absent a change to the federal law mm -hmm. by Congress. Uh, so um, we may see a little bit more of the report, but we already know what the report's about. No collusion, no obstruction, and the Democrats are upset that there's no basis for impeachment as a result. Hence all these fake fights about documents and suggesting cover-ups over irrelevant issues uh, when no uh, cover-ups are really out there. Mm -hmm. And how the whole uh, the emphasis has shifted to, um, uh, what do you call it, um, obstruction rather than collusion. 
that's what they're emphasizing now. Well, yeah, but again, there's no obstruction. The attorney general mm -hmm. found there was no obstruction. Mueller couldn't find there was obstruction, otherwise he would have uh, laid it out more specifically. Uh, the president had a right to fire people in the Justice Department and FBI. He had a right to complain about government misconduct at the DOJ, even mm -hmm. if he was the target. In fact, as head of the executive branch, one would say he had a duty to police it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like in the case of James Comey, he was incompetent. He's going to be fired by uh, the Clinton administration anyway. No one liked James Comey. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the idea that firing the FBI director leads to obstruction of justice is just absurd. The Justice Department should never have been investigating it. The idea that there's 200 pages talking about whether it was right for the president to fire people or complain about the investigation to me was more, uh, an, again, another abuse of power by Mueller as opposed to anything indication, indicating wrongdoing by President Trump. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, you know, we'll have to see where this, uh, where this leads next. But, um, Tom, thanks for coming in. Uh, many of our activists here are watching right now. I'm sure uh, th they're familiar with Judicial Watch, but uh, where could they go if they want to find out more information about how you're leading the fight on this? Well, we're all over online. We're at judicialwatch.org. We've got a Facebook Judicial Watch. We have our at Judicial Watch Twitter account. Of course, I'm on Twitter at at Tom Fitton. Uh, so uh, we're, we're always out there alerting you uh, to government misconduct and what we're doing to police it. Great. Once again, uh, Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch. Thanks for tuning in.